Coucou les puces, hello my loves, marhaba haibete. So I promised you that I would try out these two makeup sponges, so the Real Techniques and the Beauty Blender, um, and I would let you my know, I would let you know my thoughts on how they compare to one another. So in terms of just very basic details, the Beauty Blender um, retails at Sephora between, I think it's 20, and I should have looked this up before I sat down, should I not have? Probably. Um, if you buy it in like the bulk packs on Sephora, oh, that is interesting. You could, you used to be able to buy a set of two, and it was cheaper. Oh, no, there you go. You can buy the two beauty blenders and the, the, the cleanser, like the liquid cleanser for $40, and that's an online only thing, and it's always been that way. Or you can buy the original beauty blender for $20. So they have the pink one, they have a red one, they have a black one, they have the nude one, which is the one that I bought. They all, I've tried the black one, the pink one, and now this one, and they all perform the same, they're just kind of in different colors. Um, so it's that $20 range. These ones, the Real Technique sponges, depending on how you buy them, um, like where and if you buy the value sets of two, you can get them anywhere between like sort of $11 and $5, depending on what coupons you use and that kind of thing. So it's about half price. Um, and you can buy these at Sigma, at Sigma, you can buy these at Ulta, um, here in Canada I found them at Rexall Drugs, um, in the UK they're at Boots, so they're kind of at drugstores, and that kind of thing. Um, I will insert a demo of me applying half my foundation with the one, half with the other, just to show you. I think in terms of ease of blendability, um, they're both equally easy to, to blend your product out with. The one thing I will say though is that the Beauty Blender sucks up a little bit more product than the Real Techniques. And I didn't notice that until I was using them side by side and the same amount of product on each side. And I just found that the, the Beauty Blender was kind of drinking up a little bit more. I was having to add Here's more like the same kind of coverage that I was getting on my um, other side. I did wet these two before using them. And I feel like they just about double in size. So to give you an idea, this is the box that the Beauty Blender fits into usually. Um, when it's dry and it's wet now and it's kind of it, it won't it won't fall through so it almost doubles up in size they both get a lot softer when they're wet um, this one has almost um, like a bounce to it like it's almost mushy you know uh, not like play-doh but you know cause sometimes you have those stress balls and when you get really into them they get that mushy feeling this one just kind of is bouncy and airy it doesn't have that kind of um, like mushiness <laughs> once you bounce into it uh, but I will say that the pores on this one like you can see them especially when it's when it's wet they're quite pronounced I don't know if you guys can see that but the pores are kind of quite pronounced which I think what is what accounts for um, it drinking up so much more product this one I wanted to show you up close since it's hopefully in focus do you guys see that two, three weeks, and I've already got tears in it. So this one, the Beauty Blender, is a lot more durable. This one's had little tears in it already, but I find that this one absorbs less product. They both have that nice point to them, so if you're um, blending out under eye concealer, they get in there really nice. This one's supposed to have kind of the, the, the edge, so if you want to do contouring or whatever, you could. I haven't found that I really like to do that with it, but um, I like the advantage of the bottom because you can just sit it flat on your table and it sits quite nicely. Now, the real question is, which one do I prefer? And I have to say, they're really close in terms of performance um, and that kind of thing. This one, strangely, even though it absorbs more product, is actually easier to clean. This one, sometimes I have to go a couple rounds with my soap to get it clean. But if I really had to pick which one, if I lost these tomorrow, which one would I repurchase, I would have to say it's the Real Techniques. Because if they were completely equal, um, you'd always kind of want to go for the cheaper alternative, right? So they're almost completely equal. This one, though, absorbs a little less product, so I feel like I'm using less product. And even though it takes a little bit more effort to wash it, because it's half or even less than half the price of this one, I think the Real Techniques is the one that I will go for. I know people, though, are kind of ride or die with one or the other, and I think it's one of those things, if you've learned to do makeup with one versus the other, um, you'll kind of be drawn to it. So there's that. The reason that I changed from using makeup brushes to makeup sponges, um, and I was a hardcore makeup, uh, like foundation brush advocate. Like that's all I wanted. And I actually still really prefer the way a makeup brush feels in my hand. But regardless of how much I washed my makeup brushes, I just felt like after six, seven months, there was just product that kept getting get, getting stuck in there and it wasn't giving me as flawless of a finish and my face was getting more congested. So I, I switched these sponges that I can throw out every couple months because that's kind of their shelf life and that I can really deep clean really well every day 
um, so that my app, my makeup application as well as kind of my skincare was was doing better. So um, I did quickly want to touch base with you guys. Let me know if you guys are beauty blender or real technique folks, or if you're makeup brush folks and you are enjoying using brushes um, for your foundation. That is it for me today. I'll do some quick points of positivity and then I will be done. My first point of positivity is a beautiful sunny day that's living with full of determination and energy for what comes ahead. Um, my second point of positivity is this makeup. I'm playing with some new uh, Jacqueline Hill and Becca goodies and it's making me super happy. And then my third point of positivity is getting to chat with my sister a little bit last night, which was fun to get to connect with her. That is it for me today. As always, please let me know so making you guys smile. Thank you for hanging out. I will talk to you ever so soon. But before I leave you, as always, let me remind you that life is just way too short to wear boring lipstick. Bye, guys.